of a of a car of a bank or a security guard for example mm-hmm. so it, there is a debate i am not now deciding on things but there yeah. is a debate among the senior sharia scholars mm-hmm. that uh, if let's suppose that bank has a garden and there is a gardener there he is yeah. not involved in uh, in uh, in riba by the way sweeper yeah. or other things basically electrician for example there are other people who are not directly uh, involved in the riba we transactions of a bank yeah. so so there is a debate among the sharia scholars that whether it is uh, their em- uh, employment and salary are halal or not if they are providing halal services for example mm-hmm. so now uh, again organization is quite important but we need to look at the linkage of the token with the organization whether it is or not in defi uh, it is you may be able to see that like when the main net is launched the the project is delivered to the community if it, there, there is a dao the centralized autonomous organization uh, controlling or uh, guiding that project or not Mm-hmm. so then the organization itself will have a very small say and very small and less relevance with the token the community with the project itself yeah. now because the project has already been matured and now it is independent so so even then after that for example organization becomes halal or haram it may not affect the token itself mm-hmm. but sometimes it is not now you have talked about bnb so uh, it's a very good example because bnb as a token we need to see that whether it is a subject matter as a subject matter is it, it is halal or not mm-hmm. so there is again a debate uh, i have few friends who, who argued that it is it does not look sharia compliant and some of them they they gave this argument by the way that because you you look at the activities of the binance yeah. then most of them are not sharia compliant but the thing is whether as a subject matter bnb is uh, is a subject matter but uh, using the using bnb in those transaction is a different thing again yeah. so the transaction can be sharia non compliant but bnb may be sharia compliant mm-hmm. because uh, it's a different subject matter it is again the same argument when you have us dollar for example mm-hmm. you have us dollar bill so you you go to a casino and then use that 100 dollar bill the transaction is sharia non compliant but does it make your us dollar 100 bill sharia non compliant as well or not yeah but that so is- so the argue the discussion and, and i agree with you and then so the, the discussion goes as to okay yeah spot trading no issue right because you're holding mm-hmm. it you're buying you're selling whatever you know you're moving the money that's fine but making value because bnb value goes up right it's an investment also right mm-hmm. can you reap the fruits of that investment appreciation is the or the mm-hmm. asset appreciation even though binance I mean, is hmm, yeah. yes again because if you look at the binance white paper even so you will look at the, that the binance has uh, as plans and they have already implemented i uh, started implementing those plans saying that uh, we would like to create the uh, utility of bnb mm-hmm. as a token out of the ecosystem of binance even mm-hmm. so like it can be used to buy airline tickets it mm-hmm. can be a, a, we want bnb to be used to pay for sort of real services or real economic activity or goods yeah. and it is it has already uh, they have already started doing partnerships with uh, with hundreds of uh, tens uh, if not hundreds then tens of companies uh, out there mm-hmm. so the thing is again how do you quantify that everything is coming as a as a sharia non compliant or and again the thing is if it is indirect yeah. to to the value of pnb yeah. then uh, it's very difficult because uh, even your us dollar is indirectly related with the Riba. debt interest based rib, uh, debt for example yeah, yeah. so so nothing will be uh, sharia compliant in this in this perception. world actually yeah and per- in that perception nothing will be because the entire reserve systems after the 19 mm-hmm. after, after the 19 the, the second war when it was signed they were mm-hmm. taking it off gold standard i think the worst mm-hmm. worst decision in, in in economics when it comes to my opinion but I'm not going to talk about my opinions in economics here, but Kat, um, okay, so for example, now, uh, what I thought it thought about it, it was, now BNB, the token, yes, it's, it was made by Binance or the organization, or the organization holds some, you know, say into it, I don't think not anymore, but I think at some point it did, 
but now BNB has an entire use case. You build protocols on BNB, right? Like mm-hmm. Ethereum. Yeah. What else you can do that you like BNB is even if you want to think about it like this, a bank is non permissible, but if a bank has a halal department in there, and that department. Because this bank does something really crazy and it holds, it, like it gets so much promotion, that halal department will also get that promotion. Now, did that halal department just become haram because it got the promotion from this, you know, uh, from from the from the bank being non permissible? You know, th- there's those discussions that we need to have about this and, and and think about it. So that's why I was thinking, what's your take on that? It's a good that? argument. Yeah, it's a good argument. Even like conventional banks, they have Islamic windows, for example. Yeah. So even you are going into the same head office, yeah, yeah. but your department is Islamic department, mm-hmm. and the other people are going in conventional departments, basically. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a, again it's a good example of uh, that how you because HSBC for example has uh, Islamic HSBC Amana, mm-hmm. and then Standard Chartered Bank also has a Sadiq as their subsidiary, yeah. yep. and uh, uh, it is it is Islamic division. So even Barclays has uh, Islamic products. Yeah. So, so would you say like okay? So and you know people say Binance has margin trading. Would you say the margin trading is enough to make Binance or BNB sorry a, a haram investment? Not not spot trading, but investment. Can I hold BNB in my portfolio? I think no. Uh, I, I would, uh, the, uh, sorry. Uh, I think that uh, this is not the right way to look at it. Why? Because again, margin trading itself is a transaction. Uh-huh. And then we are talking about BNB as a subject matter here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So we need to differentiate between the two. BNB as a subject matter is halal. So for example, you can invest in it, you can hold it. Because uh, it is margin trading is not the only use case of BNB. Mm-hmm. There are hundreds of them right now. Some of them are halal, some of them are not. Yeah. But as a subject matter, if you look at it, does BNB has been created out of margin trading? No. Or, or uh, is it a result of margin trading only? No. Yeah. So because of that, you have to look at it separately, BNB, uh, that what is it? And uh, the transaction is margin trading is only a transaction. And again, by the way, I need to tell you also that like even margin trading, uh, uh, some of the margin trading are interest free. Yeah. So, but again, there is a, a debate against them, and I also agree that margin trading is not allowed in Sharia. Yeah. But that is the transaction, the transactional side, not a subject matter side. Yeah, I do margin trading. You know how I borrow money from my brother, <laughs> okay. or, my, or, my, or my mother mainly, like my my my, my parents, and then I, I trade, and then I make money, and I give them like, here, you gave me this much, I give it back to you in a few months. Is my form of margin trading. And that's only when I'm confident, you know, when I know I know what I'm doing for sure, for sure. Not a 70%, no, like more like 95%. Cat, okay. So what about so today, you know, Binance says we're gonna launch this new service. It's it's haram for sure, but it's a new service and it's um you know it's gonna bring a lot of value to the Binance uh, platform, and because of that value, BNB goes up by five percent. Is that five percent gonna be an issue in my investment portfolio? Again, it's uh, it's really difficult to quantify it. Mm-hmm. Or if let's suppose uh, there is a very simple use case, uh, like I was also giving an example of a of a token which was uh, seen to be Sharia compliant, and then there was a partnership with the adult entertainment company, mm-hmm. and then they started using that as a use case. So th- there, you can easily see that there was only one, one. use case. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. One. Yeah, so yeah. you can easily decide that okay this is the only case and other than that you do not see that uh, there is anything happening there yeah and so the whole value was driven by that partnership mm-hmm. but here we are talking about finance finance has a lot uh, a lot of money tens of at least tens if not some if not hundreds a lot. A lot. Of, uh, so and tens of partnership yeah. they are going in, they are expanding in different directions now yeah. some of them are halal some of them are not again yeah like for example, so, I know new protocols are being built on BNB, which could be completely non permissible, which BNB mm-hmm. derives a lot of value from sometimes. But does that mm-hmm. doesn't make, for example, you know, if somebody takes my car and he does something, you know, in movies, movies are non permissible mm-hmm. at large. Audi, is it Audi cars are being in there? 
So RD gets a huge value from it, which brings value to my own RD also, because you know, if I'm gonna sell it, all of a sudden RD is more, uh, a lot more uh, uh, valuable because people want it because they see it in Fast and Furious 10, then does it make my RD being more valuable, you know, that extra boost impermissible? And that and that's where my perception goes. But Kat, this is a layman's perception. So what I am gonna do here, I mean it is very good because uh, I just let me add this that yeah. okay, Binance has mm-hmm. they also have their own smart chain BSC yeah. and uh, they have decentralized DEX also. So, so they are providing a platform again, so they are uh, expanding in different directions. And uh, and then it can be halal, it can be haram, it doesn't uh, basically, uh, it's quite mixed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure, even um, in the times of Prophet, Sallam, there were certain situations where this was also at play where you know gold could have been used for mm-hmm. something wrong, but gold, but that wrong was deriving value to the people who also held gold for other things. Cat, this is my own opinion, but which are not as valuable as anybody else's opinion. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Dr. Farooq's opinion, I'm gonna take a few other ulama's opinion, I'm also gonna take a few other you know people in Islamic finance's opinion. I'm going to make a compiled opinion uh, document and then shall I make another video, full video on that uh, where I will let you guys choose between the difference of opinions in deciding if BNB is something because BNB is not uh, just a layman token, right? It's not just a whatever token. It's a very big token. A lot of people do like invest in it. So I think one full video will do justice to it. So inshallah, Dr. Fruk, I'm going to bother you again about that one for sure. Okay. Sure, you are you are most welcome. But by the way, one one uh, disclaimer I also wanted to put is that like we I am not uh, promoting PNB. Yes, nobody uh, is. We're not. So the thing is, yeah. So another thing is, so like what I am trying to stress and emphasize on the point is that uh, I respect people's opinion, mm-hmm. whether they consider that BNB is halal or BNB is haram. But the thing is, we need to have a very knowledge deep knowledge and uh, a very systematic approach towards the towards our outcome or our opinion that's the only thing so i am trying to basically with this discussion i'm trying to bring in bring in and uh, bring in the those points which are uh, which are basically beneficial yeah. to have a very systematic approach yeah for sure so having it yeah so that is basically so even like i just tell you this this i was reading some few fatwas of um, of uh, from some madrasas i mean sorry uh, religious schools about btc that whether it is halal or not and then when i call them i say that okay i respect that you are saying that it is haram or if if you are saying it is halal also there was one uh, religious, religious school which was saying it is halal mm-hmm. some other ones were saying haram i called both of them and i say that okay please i really respect that call, whatever is call your both opinion them go like this let them talk to yeah. each other <laughs> <laughs> but then I said that please have a systematic approach. Yeah. Your both fatwas are basically based on superficial information. Yeah. Then they say, okay, please welcome yeah. and enlighten us. We would be more than happy to review our opinion. Lovely. But Lovely. the thing is, so yeah, so the, this is the thing. So I, I, again, in this discussion, what I'm trying to do, I'm also, by the way, learning this thing. Yeah. So I'm, what I'm trying to do, bring in some points where we can use those points to have a very systematic approach towards having an opinion. Yeah. And I think that's the most valuable. And initially, you know, because this is the industry is very new, right? You guys, you know, yourself, Mufti Bilal, all and all the ulama who are focusing on this, or Islamic finance and fintech, are the pioneers for the future because no one else is taking. The, I mean, crypto was made in two thousand and like ten, eight, nine. No, none of the ulama took a serious approach to it, and that was an issue because look now we're we're lacked behind. As a community, we're behind. We're, there's, like, if it is gonna be the future generation of cur- currencies, where are we, right? So, um, because we need to have permissible um, um, options for our brothers and sisters, like where they can borrow, buy, lend, all that stuff in crypto, where the protocols yes. themselves in- intrinsically has no issues in the algorithms. But right now, there's a lot of tokens that do. Cat, I mean, that's a little bit. I'm gonna get into a little bit technical there. And I think this was a great conversation. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fruit. Exactly. I, you know, thank we're you. we're hitting exactly the mark. Uh, any last few things for the brothers and sisters who are watching that you know they should look out for, or any last comments for them? Uh, 
the only thing uh, I would like to say is that uh, I will always and I am the person who always welcome uh, uh, constructive criticism. Yeah. Uh, even uh, if it is wrapped in in personal attacks, I try to find some some points for me to learn, yeah. and uh, that's what I do. And uh, if I am, if you think that I am, I uh, my points, uh, some of them you 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 see that like there are some flaws in it. Uh, you are most welcome to correct me because I am also learning uh, this phenomena, mm -hmm. and I would be more than happy to to learn new things. Uh, and uh, to progress in this uh, phenomena or in this space uh, with the more knowledge and collective wisdom. So okay. this is what I'm trying to do. So like decentralized Bitcoin basically brought us decentralization. So let's have decentralized distributed wisdom <laughs> to uh, wisdom to, to we, approach this. We, we should make a token on uh, decentralized wisdom. Oh shoot, I just give somebody an idea. I know in about a week from now, there's gonna be a token coming out that's gonna say decentralized wisdom, watch. <laughs> Yeah, and if you do that, bro, just send us some, both of us, you know, just send us. <laughs> yes, inshallah. We'll send so the thing is, yeah. So I would be happy to to uh, to learn from uh, from the whole community, and uh, try my best to give back some some of uh, the benefits I can to the ben to the, sure. the whole community, inshallah. But and thank you so much again, Ahmed. I really enjoyed your sessions, your channel, we uh, and your. I was gonna say talks. I was gonna say we forgot to talk about your current experiences. I think that's really important when you talk about Sharia experts. What's going on? What are you guys up to? I know you guys you already talked a little bit about you know what's coming up. What other exciting things are coming up from Sharia experts and also Aleph Technologies because you're also running Aleph Technologies. By the way, guys, he runs webinars on a weekly or monthly basis. Normally monthly basis, yes. And on yeah. Aleph Technologies, where a lot of people do show up, and there's some great things you guys can all learn from. So. Dr. Fruk, talk about it. I'm also going to link that in the description below. Okay, Jazakallah Khaira. So Alif Technologies is a platform or the organization focusing on Islamic fintech. Uh, it uh, does not only specifically uh, focusing on crypto or blockchain, but we are also looking at robotics, artificial intelligence, nice. and, uh, and the IoT devices, for, for example. So it is basically like a halal digital economy and Islamic fintech uh, company. And uh, with the Sharia experts, which is based in London, we are focusing on uh, Sharia, specifically Sharia advisory for crypto, DeFi, NFTs, uh, something like that. And Sharia experts, uh, uh, we are also doing so many exciting things. For example, like uh, uh, we are doing advisory of, with uh, for for new projects coming in. They are quite exciting, and nice. it's the learning curve is very huge for us also. And uh, we are bringing in some very innovative uh, ideas and uh, some good news, inshallah, soon. So stay tuned with the Sharia experts also. You will you will see some good news. Yeah. As soon as some new good news comes out, I'm gonna bother you again to come on, <laughs> and we're gonna talk about this because I think it's important that. People get to see what exciting things are happening for them. You know, this is for the uh, for mm -hmm. the Muslims at large. So they see, you know, there there are people in behind the scenes working hard for you guys. Uh, so you know, so you guys have products and op uh, options to use when it comes to things that are permissible versus things that are non permissible. So thank you so much once again, uh, Dr. Fruk. Uh, we went over the time. My apologies, um, and I appreciate you every time you come on. And I'm gonna keep calling you on. And yeah, thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. Everybody else, take care of yourself. As always, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much. Jazakallah.